2013 is much more than just a word processor. You can also use it to create and format brochures, flyers, business cards, and more. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to use different objects such as text boxes and shapes to begin creating a flyer from scratch. We'll also look at some additional types of formatting that can add interesting attributes to your documents. If you're creating something other than a document, you may want to use a different size page other than the standard 8.5 by 11. Word 2013 offers you several page sizes to choose from. We'll choose 8.5 by 14 for our document by going to the Page Layout tab and choosing size from the page setup group and selecting the size we need. When you create something like a flyer, brochure, postcard, or business card, you don't just type text in a document like you would for most other things. Instead, you can create text boxes to enter your text. This allows you more functionality in moving the text box around the document. You can also insert text boxes into reports and articles to help make certain text stand out. Text boxes can easily be moved, resized, and repositioned along with the text inside them to make creating a layout easy. As you can see, there are a lot of built-in text boxes you can use. However, to show you how to fully use text boxes, we're going to create our own by selecting Draw Text Box. To add it, we'll go to the Insert tab and find the Text Box button in the text group. When we do that, our cursor turns into a plus sign and we can simply drag the text box into our document. Grids and rulers provide you with a way to line up text boxes and other objects to ensure they are lined up and positioned correctly within your document. We'll turn on our grid and ruler by going to the View tab and checking the boxes for the ruler and grid lines located in the Show group. The top and side rulers will give you a quick view of the size of the text box we have selected. We can also double-click anywhere in the text box to turn on the Drawing Tools Format tab and change the width or height of the text box using the fields in the Size group. Once you have a text box created, you'll need to add the text. It's very simple to add text into our text box. We just click inside the text box and start typing. If your text box is too small for the text that you're adding, you can either change the text font or increase the size of the text box. We'll change the size of the text box. To resize a text box, we just drag on the handles to enlarge or reduce it, much like a picture. We can also rotate the text box using the circular arrow at the top, much like a shape. We'll also move our text box so it's the heading of our document. We can use the grid lines to make sure our text box is where we want it to be on the document. We can also select the text just as we would with a normal document and change the formatting using the formatting tools on our Home tab. There are also text effects under the Drawing Tools Format tab that we can see when the text box is active. We'll cover more of those tools later in this lesson. You can determine where you want to place your text inside the text box. It can be aligned to the top, middle, or bottom of the box, as well as to the left, center, and right, very similar to our cells inside our tables. We'll align our text so it's aligned to the center and middle of the text box. We'll go to the Home tab to center our text and then return to the Drawing Tools Format tab and click the Align Text button in the text group. We'll select Middle to apply it. You may also want to use the Shape Style Gallery to format your text boxes. The Shape Style Gallery has different formats you can use for your text boxes 
or you can format your own using the shape fill, shape outline, or shape effects the same way you use text effects. Let's look at some of the options in the shape style gallery. With our text box selected, we'll click the drop down arrow of the shape style gallery to view our options. Now we can move our mouse over the different options and preview what our text box will look like. If none of the options fit what we want, we can use the tools to the right of the shape style gallery to change them to exactly what we want. Let's apply a light gray fill using the shape fill button to the right of the shape style gallery. We simply click the shape fill button and select the light gray color. Now we'll add a light blue outline using the shape outline button below the shape fill button and then use the shape effects button to add an outer shadow. Let's also change the font size of our text in our first text box to 36 point font. First we need to select the text in the text box, then use the font size drop down in the font group of the home tab to change it. We'll also change the color of our text to dark blue using the font color command. Finally, we will move the text box at the top of our document so it is offset to the left instead of to the right. To move an object, we will click on it and hover our mouse pointer over one of the edges. It will turn into a cross with arrows on each end. Now we'll just click and hold down our mouse and drag the shape to move it. Let's say that you don't want a white background for the document that you're creating. You can either add a page background or you can draw a shape that you can place behind the text boxes you have already created. The shape will cover most of the page and serve as a background, so you'll need to move the new shape behind your text boxes in order to use it as a background. This is commonly called stacking objects. Let's add a background by drawing a rectangle shape in our document. We'll click the Shapes button in the Insert Shape group on the Drawing Tools Format tab. We need to have our text box selected so we can see the Drawing Tools Format tab. Now we can select the rectangle shape in the recently used shape section and draw the shape to fit on our page. Notice that we aren't able to see our text boxes. We'll fix that in a moment, but first we'll format the shape the same way we formatted our text box and change the color to a light green color using the shape fill button. Now we'll move the shape so it appears behind the text boxes. First we'll go to the Arrange group under the Drawing Tools Format tab and click the Send Backwards button. Now we can see the last text box we added. We can also choose the drop down arrow of the Send Backward button and choose Send to Back. This will send the shape behind our other text box and any other elements we may have on our page. If we have text on our page that is not located in a text box, we can also choose Send Behind Text to send the shape behind all of the text on the page. The Bring Forward button works the same way, only in reverse. If you'd like to add some interest to your documents, you can add a drop cap. A drop cap is a simple embellishment that can make your documents look more interesting. A drop cap is a letter at the beginning of a section or paragraph that is larger than the text that follows it. It is different than simply increasing the font size of the first letter because instead of the letter extending upward, it will drop a few lines down. Let's go to a different document to apply a drop cap to the first paragraph. We'll position our cursor in the paragraph we want to add the drop cap to, then click the drop cap button located in the text group of the insert tab. 
We can choose to place the drop cap within the paragraph or in the margins. We can also exercise a little more control over it by clicking the drop cap options to open a dialog box. From here we can set the number of lines we want to drop down and even choose how much space to put between it and the text that follows. We'll change the lines to drop to 4 and click OK to apply the change. The drop cap now has four lines to the right of it. Watermarks are usually stamped onto a page to provide a form of document security, similar to the watermarks you might see on a check. Word 2013 can give you a similar effect. It allows you to place a light, printable image behind all of the text and objects in a document. You can use it to add an effect to the document mark it as a sample, or even authenticate it. Watermarks aren't like typical text or objects that you would insert into your document. Instead, it's actually a background, which means it can't be manipulated or moved around like other objects. Let's go ahead and add a draft watermark to our document. We need to click the Design tab and select the Watermarks button from the Page Background group. There are preloaded watermarks in Word 2013. Let's scroll through to find a draft watermark and then select it to add it to the document. If we aren't able to find a watermark that we'd like to use, we could have easily browsed the watermarks that were created for the Office community by clicking More Watermarks from Office.com. Just keep in mind we'd need to be connected to the internet in order to use this. If we still weren't able to find what we needed, we could also create a custom watermark using pictures on our computer or entering our own text. For example, we can click Custom Watermark from the Watermark button drop-down and then choose which type of watermark we'd like to add. Once we've finalized our paper and it's no longer a draft, we can remove the watermark by returning to the Design tab, selecting Watermark, and clicking Remove Watermark. If you decide you'd like to create a trifold brochure, keep in mind that there are templates that are available for you, but if you'd like to design your own, it's actually quite easy. For example, we'll open a new document and create a basic trifold brochure. Our first step is to go to the Page Layout tab, click the Orientation button in the Page Setup group, and change the orientation to Landscape. Next, we can add columns by clicking the Columns button and adding three columns to the page. Then start adding text boxes, shapes, and images to complete our trifold brochure. For example, We'll use a text box style in the first column and add a picture to our second column. We'll just click inside the column and use the commands under the Insert tab to add our objects. Once you've added everything, once we've added everything, our trifold brochure is complete.